Hello everyone. In this video, we will tell you about an absolutely amazing and interesting thing, specifically about an artifact which is called the Spear of Destiny, the Lance of Longinus, or the Spear of Christ. It is called in various ways. This spear is one of the essential relics in Christianity. It is always closely connected and intertwined with another more significant artifact, which we talked about in the previous video. It is the Grail, the Holy Grail. In the secular world, this sign is also called the Tension, the Sign of Grail. Since one of the main legends says, whoever possesses this spear and understands what forces it serves, holds the fate of the world in his hands, good or evil ones. So I will start with those who possess the Spear of Destiny. Alexander of Macedonia, Julius Caesar, Joshua, King Herod, obviously Longinus himself, whose name is associated with this spear. Saint Mauritius, Charlemagne, Frederick Barbarossa, Napoleon was also hunting for it. Emperor Constantine, of course, the spear attracted the greatest attention and has been associated with Adolf Hitler in many recent articles and versions. Let's say he was the last historical figure who possessed this spear. What is interesting to us, Alatra TV released a video, XP Energy, world's first creators of artificial consciousness. What is the video overall about? About a group of enthusiastic programmers who got together and decided to create an artificial consciousness. Attention, artificial consciousness, not intelligence. These are absolutely different things. It has to be understood. I don't know, the difference between intelligence and consciousness is like between a scooter and an airplane. In fact, many viewers just like us are attracted by the symbols that this company has, including those shown in the XP Energy video. Meaning, the Spear of Destiny itself. The actual spearhead, or as it is also called, the Spear of Omnipotence. It's really some kind of science fiction, as if the future is now. Only in films, you know, when in some futuristic ones. You were right, you didn't see anything. I didn't see anything right away. Look here, Tatiana. This is what's here. Here it is, you see? And here it is. And here on Alexei, we specially made t-shirts. Wow. To show. We thought you were about to notice. This is... It's good that I didn't bet. The main thing is that... I would have lost the bet. Myself, personally, wouldn't attract this piece of metal. This would attract me. It attracts everyone, Igor Mikhailovich. This is the Spear of Destiny. Yes. And this is a piece of metal. It's convenient and comfortable, I agree, yes. Yes. I don't know if somebody in Ukraine has such a piece of metal. Well, it doesn't matter. Single piece, maybe. Possibly, I don't know. It's not a fact. But definitely not this, you see? It's... If someone possibly has this, yes. they definitely don't have this one. Well, we have. Is this a full-size copy or the original? Tatiana, everyone who says that they have the original, well, four claim that. They all have a copy, believe me. But that's not the point. What matters is symbolism. The meaning it carries. And that, what stands behind this meaning. That's what's important. When the guy saw the Spear of Omnipotence, this very spearhead, they asked the question, Is this a full-size copy or the original? Well, I think everyone would really like to know whether it's the original and where it can be if it's not the original. Igor Mikhailovich answered, Tatiana, everyone who says that they have the original, well, four claim that. They all have a copy, believe me.
Naturally, we would like to know who is not mistaken and who has this spear in his hands. Now, we'll go through those very four places or sources that claim, namely, they don't even suppose, they insist that they possess the original Holy Spear or the Spear of Omnipotence. The first one, which is the most famous and promoted, is the museum in Vienna. That very spear, which Charlemagne, Frederick Barbarossa and naturally Adolf Hitler possessed, is located there. After it had gone to Americans as a trophy, it returned to this very museum. Next, there is the Krakow spear. It is kept in the city of Krakow, but it is officially recognized to be a copy of the Vienna spear. It is not recognized as official. The next place where another spear is kept is Rome. The Vatican also claims that they have the original, while Vienna has the wrong one. But it's important to understand that there are versions that the spear is more connected and refers to another character who also lived in the era of Jesus Christ, the Apostle Peter. The most mysterious is the Armenian spear. Why? Because it is rarely exhibited. It wasn't even shown to everyone, yet it's not difficult to find. There is a particular monastery whose name can be easily found, but not easily pronounced. Echmiadzin Cathedral. Its story is told how it got there, how and who was hunting after it, and tried to take it away. But the official story goes no further than these four copies, four official sources, four official places, where the spear is believed to be original. By the way, whether it is so or not, write in the comments, it's not difficult. Down there, your version, whose spear is original, genuine, and so on. Now there are only these versions, and what is happening between them. They argue about who owns that very original which Christ was pierced with. What did Austrians do? They weren't ashamed to perform a chemical analysis of their spear. Using a virtual model of the spear, Feather showed the stages of the performed analysis one after another. Breaking up the legend that had lived for hundreds of years, Feather identified that the spear had nothing to do with the times of Jesus Christ. But the Armenian spear is not allowed to be examined. The Roman spear is not allowed to be examined either. Everything is being hidden. What for? Again, to have a certain myth and a mystery around them. A representative of the Vatican can go out and say, guys, they have a fake spear. And this is proven by science. Yet, we have the original one. Let us touch it. Prove it. No, no, we can't. We don't give relics. You may only look during certain hours, and moreover, not everyone is allowed. It's just a speculation. What is important, and what would we ourselves like to understand, is the Lance of Longinus really that very relic which can change the fate of the world? The prophecy sounds as follows. The one who happens to possess the spear and is aware of what forces it serves, holds the fate of the world in his hands, good or evil ones. It's important to understand that when Hitler took possession of this spear, he knew about the prophecy. Hitler knew that this spear could help him realize his plans. Naturally, he didn't part with the spear, always keeping it with him. There is a theory that when American soldiers found and took this spear away, Adolf Hitler committed suicide literally 30 minutes later. The next version, which is, let's say, openly speculated on by so many people, is whether Americans returned the original spear to Europe, to Vienna or if they kept the original and returned a copy to Vienna. It is version number one. The second one, which is even more interesting, is that the Nazis had made their own copy, left it in plain sight before Americans invaded this secret bunker, while the spear which Hitler had, they hid and stored somewhere else. Thus we can actually get confused and lost in versions and guesswork. We would like to hear your versions about that as well. Perhaps you have some guesses or information about it. 
maybe you studied and researched this topic. Share. Send what you have to our email address. Write in the comments. We will be happy to contact and talk to you. And we will continue the further study of this topic. Let's go back to the most popular and well-known version of the spear. What happened? Why is it called specifically the Spear of Christ? Everything is easy and simple. Centurion Longinus, who took part in the execution of Christ, pierced the body of crucified Christ with his spear. According to the legend or the version of one of the Gospels, it is described that blood from Christ's wound fell on Longinus's face. And what happened? A miracle happened. He was healed. You should understand what he was healed from. He was healed from blindness. The centurion was that very soldier who pierced the side of crucified Savior with a spear and was healed from blindness by the spilled blood. We went further, dug a little bit more, and we wondered how a blind person could have actually been a soldier of the Roman Legion, the force of the most powerful empire at that time. They say that he had a cataract. Thereafter, Longinus recognized Jesus Christ as the prophet, accepted him as the Son of God, and became a Christian. He was among the first to people to adopt Christianity, and then he went to preach it. This is an official version, the most common one. It can be found anywhere without any problems. We decided to compare the information with one given in the book Sensei IV by Anastasia Novik. It is said there that Longinus wasn't blind, and he was one of the trusted people of Pontius Pilate. Specifically, he had a task to pierce Christ with high precision in order to imitate his death, meaning his murder. Longinus completed this task perfectly well. That is, he struck at a specific angle between particular ribs, and the hit was so precise that he didn't harm any of the internal organs. That is why, attention, here's a logical question. Can a blind man perform such an action? I believe it's impossible, honestly. Taking into account the fact that Roman soldiers were very well trained in military science, they were skilled in the use of weapons. So to give such a precise strike was not a big deal for one of them. You will have a logical question. What for? This was done to save Christ. Pontius Pilate understood that it would be hard for him to go against Jewish priesthood. So he decided to cheat a little bit. His trusted people gave him a hand in this. As for what happened to Jesus Christ and his destiny afterwards, what happened to Pontius Pilate and specifically to Longinus? You can find this out by reading the book. We won't tell you or give you spoilers. Guys, if this is interesting, follow the link and read. As usual, you can find links to these books below. You can easily download, read them, and compare the facts yourselves. If you are interested, please leave your comments below as to what you think about all of this. Generally speaking, we got a natural and logical question from our point of view. Why is the murder weapon shrouded in a halo of honor in Christianity? Why is it one of the main relics of this religion? In the Middle Ages, it was very important for any ruler to confirm his power with some kind of divine providence. If you possessed one of the Christian relics, people were less suspicious about how you had got the power, whether you were doing everything right, and so on. That's the reason why all the rulers strove to possess a certain artifact, for instance, a part of Christ, his shroud, nails, or that very spear, and so on, and so forth. It was sort of a confirmation of the holiness of one or another ruler. By the way, specifically regarding this point, in the Middle Ages there were a lot of speculations, meaning there were so many fakes. I think that the Vatican quickly understood the benefit of such a business and started trading those very spears. Again, at a certain point in time, 
The Holy Lance, or the Lance of Longinus, got to Nuremberg. Nuremberg was a very rich city at that time, and they had to attract more attention from merchants, pilgrims, and believers. So they bought the spear from Prague and put it on display for everyone. There, there were a bunch of rumors there, like if you touched it, you suddenly got healed, or you got the luck, and so on. But the main thing, as far as I understood, was that it gave its owner the power to implement his goals. If we consider versions of the origin of this spear, well, let's say, in our opinion, there is an illogical and a logical version. It is being built solely on the algorithm and the chronology of the appearance of this spear in the hands of different people. One of the versions is certainly more interesting to the Jewish people. This spear was supposedly once thrown at David, that David who defeated Goliath. From David, it was passed on to Joshua. After Joshua, it got to Herod, somehow. And after Herod, for some reason, it appeared in the hands of centurion Longinus. This point isn't clear. How could the Judaic ruler give the spear of omnipotence to a Roman centurion? It's very strange. And there is another version according to which Longinus received this spear from his father, who was also a Roman legionary. His father served Julius Caesar. Julius Caesar possessed this spear of omnipotence and, let's say, as a token of good service, granted this spear to Longinus' father, and later it was passed on to Longinus further. It is possible to trace the chain of all other possessors whom we named. This version is more logical. I'm deliberately not saying more trustworthy, but I'm saying more logical. Why? Because then we can follow the chain to Alexander of Macedonia and link all this with the fact that world rulers and conquerors strove to possess this spear. How did the spear get to Julius Caesar? Well, this question remains open too. However, it is believed that before Julius Caesar, another great military leader, Alexander of Macedonia, also owned this spear. How did it appear in the hands of Alexander? Well, we don't know this either. Here, further, many, many more questions arise, many more versions and assumptions. Yet still, when was this spear actually made? Naturally. This immediately gives us a hint that the spear of omnipotence existed even in pre-Christian times. Hence, it existed before, let's say, Jesus appeared on this earth. Again, this gives us a hint that this weapon was created a very, very long time ago, and nobody knows who made it. And most importantly, it's not clear what for. So who do you think created it? Perhaps it's of extraterrestrial origin. If we talk about mysteries and legends, or rather about tales that exist as regards to the spear of omnipotence, then perhaps one of the most interesting ones, in our opinion, is a story that by means of the spear of omnipotence, it is possible to defeat Satan. And here, let's say we arrive at the image of George the Victorious. I believe many people know George the Victorious as a victor over the serpent, as a victor over everything evil. He is a rider on a white horse who wears a cloak and pierces a dragon with a spear. Well, again, in many religions, a dragon is a symbol of evil, a symbol of Satan. We are specifically interested in the information given in the books by Anastasia Novik. In Sensei Book 1, the author is sharing her dream with Sensei himself. In this dream, she describes the Red Horseman. Guys, I will now read out this extract, and then I'll explain why this is so interesting to us. When the star got very close, I made out that it was a horseman. His attire and armor were made of pure gold, which gleamed brightly and shone like red fire. Even his horse was covered with a cloth made of fine platings of pure gold. The dazzling clothes completely hid the horseman, leaving only his eyes visible. In his hand he held a spear. At the end of the spear there was a flag depicting a bud of a lotus on it, inside which was a pyramid, an eye, and also some hieroglyphs and pictures.
So what? Another spear. Please pay attention to the flag and what is depicted on this flag. In our previous video, we told you exactly about the signs of Shambhala and about the Tamga of the Lord of Shambhala. Now, it's not difficult to compare and conclude that the Spear of Destiny is actually always linked with the Grail. The Tamga of the Lord of Shambhala provides, let's say, a hint of what the Grail really is. While the Red Horseman is Rigden Japal, meaning the Lord of Shambhala. In our opinion, this information is very interesting. Let's say, it urges us to ponder and search in a little different plane. Why is the name of the company and the logo is the Spear of Destiny? Actually, it has commonality. We use in our practice, and we may even talk about it, we use what the alchemists call the elixir of immortality. That is, basically it is a stimulant. We will talk about it later. All right. We'll sit down comfortably wherever you want and talk. What is the elixir of immortality in alchemy? This is the second place. Say, in importance in all alchemy, the first place is the Philosopher's Stone. Yes. What is the Spear of Destiny in Christianity? Where do we live? In a Christian country, right? It's a symbol. It takes second place. A relic. The first place is taken by the Holy Grail. This is what many people would want, to possess it and get it. Here is such an associative connection, and not only. Thank you. Let's say so. It's interesting. But that's not all either. In the video, XP Energy, world's first creators of artificial consciousness, there are actually a lot of interesting and unusual symbols. Since I've already said, we were attracted exactly by the symbol of the spear, the spear of omnipotence, we decided to delve into this subject and find something relevant. However, guys, I will repeat, perhaps you've already seen this video, and perhaps you became interested in some other symbols, their interpretation and deciphering in various cultures, in various ages of our civilization. Therefore, bravely write about this and share your versions. I believe you know our email address. If for some reason you forgot it, it has just appeared right here on the screen. Also, for this purpose, there is a commentary section below where you can write about that. Don't be shy. Be bold. Let's decipher all this symbolism together and let's say, get to the bottom of it and discover the truth which helps a lot of people to be at least free and at most happy. Thank you for being with us. See you. Friday the 13th, the dark day in the history of humanity. Templars, why was the most powerful order of the Middle Ages destroyed? The most mysterious and significant relics of our world, the Grail, the Spear of Destiny, what significance do these artifacts have for our civilization? November 13th, the Fourth International Conference, Kaleidoscope of Facts, in search of the truth, the Holy Grail, the Spear of Destiny. Who has been guiding the course of our history for centuries? Inconvenient facts, secret societies, priestly organizations, and knightly orders. Who are Arhats and Archons, Freestone Cutters and Freemasons? The Society of Imhotep's Time. Why are the priests still afraid of disclosing the real history? We invite scientists, experts, and everyone who wishes to study these and other questions together. In the international research within the framework of the unique Kaleidoscope of Facts project, live on Friday, November 13th, 2020. In search of the truth, the Holy Grail, 
the Spear of Destiny. Knowing the past, we can change the present and the future. It's time to bring the truth back to people. Initiated by the participants of Alatra International Public Movement from Germany and Austria.